Hello, and welcome to another edition of Orthopedic Sports Medicine Patient Educational Series with Dr. Adam Draghi. In this video, we're going to explore the specifics of the rotator cuff repair surgery. This shoulder is a right shoulder. You can see the arm down here. This is the shoulder blade up around here and attached to the shoulder blade are a series of muscles whose tendons attach around the circumference of the ball of the ball and socket and collectively these tendons make up the rotator cuff. In this video we're going to explain exactly how we fix the rotator cuff tendon back to the bone. As we look at the shoulder we can see that in the operating room we gain access to the shoulder through a series of different portals or cannulas. This allows us to place the camera within the joint so that we can see the rotator cuff. You can see our camera here in the back of the shoulder. It's looking from the back towards the front onto the rotator cuff tendon. This tendon in the front appears to be nice and attached to the bone. However, this tendon up top, and in this particular shoulder, this is the supraspinatus tendon, this tendon is torn up and away from the bone. And you can see that it's actually retracted back about a centimeter or two from its attachment on the bone here at what we call the footprint. So we come in and initially we just want to pull on that tendon and see exactly how far it's going to come back to the bone. We then roughen up the bone to create a bony bleeding surface so that the tendon can actually heal back down to the bone. We then will create a punch hole in the bone at which point we will place what is called a swivel lock anchor into the bone. This is essentially a screw that drives the stitches for the repair down into the bone. The insertion device is then removed and the sutures are brought out the outside of the body. We then will take the sutures and pass them through the rotator cuff tendon, retrieving them back out of the body. We will dock them temporarily into another cannula. As you can see, we'll then place a second stitch in the more posterior portion of the footprint and pass that stitch up through the rotator cuff tendon as well. From here, we will take a single blue and a single white stitch out the lateral portal. This will now be loaded into a third anchor. As we pull on the stitches and place the anchor, the rotator cuff tendon is then reduced to the bone. As we can see in this video, the rotator cuff tendon is being reduced to the bone as the sutures are being driven into a third hole with swivel lock anchor. As the anchor is advanced, we are able to nicely reduce the tendon to the bone, removing the excess suture at the end. In this particular shoulder, there's a small little dog ear that we will reduce with a simple stitch in the far back portion of the tendon. We'll then take our additional two sutures and put them into a fourth and final anchor. This reduces the entirety of the rotator cuff to the footprint. You can see very nicely now in this depiction that the previous rotator cuff tear has now been reduced back down to the bone and this series of crisscrossing stitches are actually working to provide compression of the tendon against the bony footprint in order to create healing. 
I would like to thank my friends at Arthrex for providing the implants necessary to perform state-of-the-art arthroscopic rotator cuff repairs. I'd also like to thank them for providing the surgical animation for this video. I hope this video has helped you to better understand the specifics of exactly how we perform arthroscopic rotator cuff repairs. Have a great day.